Christ bless. Hey, y'all give me a minute, please. Give me a minute. And I'll be, we'll be on and popping. So y'all just give me a minute. Luke 14, verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out unto the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Sweet away, I clarify. Sand beats alone, all great to eat. 
Hey, look, y'all, let's go. Hold on. <coughs> let's go and send up these prayers. Hey, I hope and pray and hope, man, y'all. Uh, y'all morning starting off right. Uh, today's topic is uh, how to battle lust. How to battle lust. Uh I think we fasted what two days ago. We had a fast, man. For a lot of y'all that fast, that joined in with us, all praise to the Most High. Hey, everybody that sent me a message and told me to pray for them or their child, you know, what I'm saying for uh, the conditions y'all battling, I made sure that you know, what I'm saying I pray for you as well. You know, what I'm saying by name, by name. That's why it'd be good to send us your name. So I, I had a face through Facebook, so all praises for that. Um, another, I'm planning another fast this Monday. I got to get back like I used to. I used to fast two and three days out of the week. A lot of people who was with me with those sticking with me with through them blog talk days, they know. If anybody remember them blog talk shows, because before it was daily bread, I was doing blog talk. You know what I'm saying? And before blog talk, it was uh, History and AM. I think they're trying to bring History and AM back because History and AM used to be like four or five in the morning. I'm like, man, I'm just getting up early to do History and AM. Man, y'all ask me that every class <laughs> when I'm coming to Philly. Hey, I don't know, man. I'm Lord's will. I get that, so. Lord's will. Hey, this fro, hey, look, my hair is long, man. It's just long. I'm gonna get it braided in a minute. I'm gonna get it braided. So uh I told y'all, man, look, it, it I can it can compact all the way down when you'll know I don't got this much hair. But this stuff long, man. But look, y'all, let's go and send up these prayers. Let's get started. <laughs> Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we give our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the king and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, let me put my phone on silent. Y'all know everybody like to call. As soon as you start a class. All right, y'all, today's class, Battling Unclean Spirits. That's what I need to title them. I'm going to go back and retitle them uh, all, uh, Battling Unclean Spirits. Now, I did a series like this before, and we went for like what? I think we went for like two months straight. With the battling unclean spirits, I mean battling unclean, yeah, with the uh, battling unclean spirits series. Lust, lust. We're gonna deal with how to battle lust today. Uh, trying to think. Before I go into that, I want to deal with spiritual growth. Before we deal with how to battle lust, let's deal with growing spiritually. How to grow spiritually. Uh, let's open up with First Peter 2 and 2. First Peter 2, verse 2. All right, it says, As newborn babes desire to send some milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And hey, to grow spiritually in the truth, you must desire the sincere milk of the word. 
Now I know a lot of y'all like, hey, so what is the sense of milk of the word? Let's get it. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter six. Let's see what the sincere milk of the word is. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And let's start in verse uh, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. So in order to grow spiritually, you got to desire the milk. And desire the milk is you learning the commandments. You got to learn the commandments in order to grow spiritually. It's saying thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. What are you talking about? Verse 2, he's talking about the commandments. The law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. It say, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So design the sincere milk of the word is the commandments. Let's go from there to John chapter 3. Now, another, another thing too when we're all spiritually, you got to be born again. First and foremost, desire the sincere milk of the word, learn these commandments. As you start to learn the commandments, you got to be born again. Let's go to John chapter 3, verse 1. And the reason why I'm opening up with growing spiritually first, because once you grow spiritually, you know what I'm saying, you can, it, it'll be easier for you to sit up there to battle lust. Why? Because you know the commandments of God. You know what I'm saying? It'll be easy for you. What what did we deal with the other day? It'll be easy for you to overcome depression. Why? Because you learned the commandments of God. You know what God expected you. You learned the word of God. Now you can battle. Now you got your now you got on uh the your the whole arm of God. You got the commandments on. Let's read John chapter 3, verse 1. Matter of fact, I'm going to get straight to the point. Uh, 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So in order to grow spiritually, you got to be born again. How do we become born again? Go to 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So the word of God makes us born again. Uh, when you come into this truth, a lot of the stuff you learned, it was wrong in the world. You got to let it go. Go to 2 Andrews 14 real quick. You got to let it go. Some of the stuff in the world that you learned, you think it's still right, but it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Our thoughts got to change. Our thoughts got to be uh, after the word. You know what I'm saying? That's the way our mindset got to be. Second Andrew chapter 14, verse 34. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts. You see that you got to subdue your own understanding. A lot of stuff that we learned in the world, we still, we still think it's right. And then we try to take it and we try to merge it in with uh, the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Which is going to cause confusion in the wrong, long run and keep you from being born again. Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, meaning you got to change your minds, you should be kept alive and after death you shall obtain mercy. All right, uh, so you got to be born again. You got to desire to, uh, to grow spiritually. You got to desire to sincere the milk of the word which is the commandments. You got to be born again and you're born again by the word of God. Uh, go to 1 Peter 1 and 23. Understand that the word can renew you. The word of God can renew you spiritually. I just went through that. I mean, first time you're 10 and 6. First time you're 10 and 6. Now, as you start to grow spiritually, 
the most high gonna be transforming you into another man why because you uh you learn you learn in the word of god and you apply by the fact that i uh put uh, yeah but i gotta put that down too make sure you apply because some people just hear other word but they don't do first samuels chapter 10 verse 6 and the spirit of the lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and thou shalt be turned unto another man as you start to grow spiritually you'll be turned into another man you'll be turned into another man your sisters will be turned into another woman but first and foremost you got to desire the sincere milk of the word you got to learn these commandments <coughs> you got to be born again you got to do your own understanding you got to let that go you got to reform your thoughts once you start to do that then you'll be renewed spiritually by the word of god and as you start to grow spiritually, the Lord will turn you to another man. Now, another way to grow spiritually, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I know, y'all, it's like two classes in one. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, in order to grow spiritually, you got to study. You got to study. Why? So you can rightly divide the word of truth. Okay, another way. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I'm going to show you why you should study. One of the reasons why you should study so you can rightly divide the word of truth. Go to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 10. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 10. It says, O sinner out of thy holy heavens. The her is talking about wisdom. The her is talking about wisdom. O sinner out of thy holy heavens and from the throne of thy glory, that being present she may labor with me, that I may know what is pleasing unto thee. That's the reason why you should study. You want to study so you can know what's pleasing to the God, know what's pleasing to God and his will go to first thessalonians chapter four and then we're going to jump into the topic so you study because you want to know what's pleasing to god you want to know how to please god you want to know his will and you want to do his will first thessalonians chapter four Let's start at verse 3. I mean, let's start at 1. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. So uh, the apostles taught us how to please God so we can grow spiritually. For well, ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you abstain from fornication. That's the will of God. Of course, the scriptures say the will of God is to keep his commandments. But the Lord uh, also, fornication, what? God give us commandments about not committing fornication. So he want us to abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel and sanctification and honor the most i want you because remember his your vessel is the temple that he dwell in and if your vessel unclean the lord ain't gonna dwell with you it said not in the lust of concupiscence even as the gentiles which know not god it say that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified. But God have not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Go from there real quick to Romans 8 and 8. Romans 8 and 8. Matter of fact, I don't want Romans 8 and 8. Go to Ecclesiastes 35. And three. 
what's pleasing to God. Ecclesiastes 35 and 3. It says, to depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation, meaning you, uh, propitiation means to earn favor with God. It's pleasing to the Lord when you depart from wickedness. Go from there to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. Let's get another thing that's pleasing to the Most High. This is the reason why you got to study. You want to know what's pleasing to him, and you need to learn his will so you can do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. But after death, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them their belief. So preaching is pleasing to the Lord. It pleases him when we get out here and do this work. So I think we got boots on the ground every single day on the streets. We got classes three to four times a day, seven days a week. So the thing we're doing right now is real pleasing to the Lord. All right, let's go to 2 Timothy real quick. And then we're going to get into the topic, how to battle lust. But first and foremost, in order to battle your lust, you got to grow spiritually. got to grow spiritually. All right, let me get this. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 2, let's start at verse 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, it's a pleasing to the Lord when we endure hardness. It's pleasing God when we endure hardness. Let's read on. No man that war entangled himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. You see that? That's pleasing to the Lord right there. Let's please don't be entangled with the furs of this life, with the world. You know what I'm saying? Set your affection on above, set your affection on things above and not on things on earth. So uh all right, y'all, let's jump up into this uh how to battle lust. Now let's look up the word lust first. Now a lot of us battle lust, man. Everybody battle lust. For real, anybody online that say they're about a lust, the first thing I'd be like, oh, hell no, you lying. Because it's all, it's different type of lust. Some people lust for power. You know what I'm saying? Some people lust for money. You know, uh, some people uh, lust for clothing. You know what I'm saying? Some people lust after women. Some people lust after men. Hell. Men lust after men. Women lust after women. So it's all types of lust, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see, let me see. I it's different meanings for the word lust. One of the meanings for the word lust is uh, hold on, hold on, y'all just had it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> all right, let me scroll back up. I thought I just had it. Okay, lust, strong desire, strong desire, uh, to have a strong desire for something, okay? A very powerful feeling of wanting something. So that's what I'm saying. Some of y'all, you got different type of lust. Some of y'all, you got, you got a, a, a lust demon on you for sex. You know what I'm saying? Some of you got a lust demon on you for money. You know what I'm saying? You speak about that. Uh, uh, let me think. Let me think. And you read about that. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see. Um, all right. For some reason, y'all thought it was freezing. Hey, is everybody getting good feed? Is everybody getting good feed? Y'all let me know, because for some reason, it looked like uh, the feed is bad. Yeah, man, some people lust after food. <laughs> some people lust after food.
Okay, all praises. I just wanted to make sure y'all. Okay, all praise. It's good. It's good. It's good. All right. For some reason, man, it looked like it stopped. All right. Well, look, I'm going to keep going. I see the comments. So all praise to the most high. Okay, some people lust out for food, money, clothes, sex. Man, it's all different types of lust. You know what I'm saying? Now, what's the opposite of lust? Let's look up uh, the opposite of lust is contentment content okay remember what lust is i want to look up i want to read the definition of lust again and i'm gonna take my time with this class lust a very powerful feeling or wanting something a very strong sexual desire because it's different meanings of the word lust uh to have a strong desire for something strong desire Hey, look, uh, I'm going to tell you, look, I'm going to read this. Uh, strong desire, a lust for power and fame. Some people want power. Some people want fame. You want to be that guy. You know what I'm saying? You want to be that guy. You want to be that guy with the high rank. You want the preeminence uh, to have a strong desire for some. Kathy has been lusting for my job for a long time. Some of y'all, you desire, uh, you covet you covet what other people got. You know what I'm saying? Now, let's get this real quick. It's a law about that. It's a law about being covetous. You know what I'm saying? Uh, where we at? Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And then we're going to get the opposite of lust. Okay, Exodus, chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. You see that? One of the things said, hey, uh, one of the me under one of the meanings, the example was Kathy has been lusting for my job for a long time. Some of y'all you desire other people's dis uh, positions. That even goes on in the school. That goes on in our school. Like you have some people the head of the kitchen. Some people, they covet to be the head of the kitchen. They think they could do it better. They lusted after the next person's job instead of being content. The opposite of lust is content. Let me look up the word content. Okay, content in a state of peaceful happiness, contented, satisfied, pleased. A state of satisfaction. So instead of you being in a state of satisfaction, you have a strong desire for something. You know what I'm saying? You got a very powerful feeling of want for something on you. You know what I'm saying? A lot of you brothers, you ain't content with your wife. Some of you sisters ain't content with your husband. Therefore, you lusting after other men. You wonder why you lusting after other men and you having dreams about other men. I remember my sister told her husband she was having dreams about another man. I'm like, come on, sis, you should have never told him that. That's why. It's because it was lust there. Whatever issues that you're having with your husband, instead of you working, working, working them out, first and foremost, and then being content with the man that the most high put you put in your life, you know what I'm saying? Now you lusting. You know what I'm saying? Now you lust. And it could have just been a dream, but um, a lot of time it be our lust. And let's uh let's get into Ecclesiastes real quick. Show y'all something about these dreams. Because some of y'all be like, man, I, I dream about sex all the time. Even when you're married, I, that's why you're not supposed to get married just to fulfill your lust. Because I know a lot of people think when you stop, I mean, a lot of people think when you get married, the lust then going to go, especially if you got strong sexual desires. A lot of you think the lust for sex going to go once you get married. No. That's why, hold on, let me get Tobit first. And then there was something else I was just about to get. I ain't write it down. Go to Tobit chapter 8, verse 7. It said, now, O oh Lord, I take not this sister for lust, but uprightly. Make sure when you take a wife, you take her uprightly. You do not take her for lust. Do not take her for lust. 
because just because you got married, they don't mean uh, your uh, your lust, your them strong sexual desires gonna go somewhere. If that's what uh, that's what you bat. Let's read that. Let's read it again. And now, Lord, I take not this my sister for lust, but a rightly. Therefore, mercifully ordain that we may become aged together. You know what I'm saying? I, I tell brothers and sisters, when you proving, make sure the sister, make sure that you can see yourself spending the rest of the life of that with that person. You know what I'm saying? If you can't see yourself spending the, the rest of your life with that person, do not get betrothed. Do not put yourself in a situation where you, you know, saying where you're gonna be bound, where you're gonna be bound to Christ come back. You need to see yourself growing old with that person, see yourself having a family with that person here. You want to damn near see your future with that person. You know what I'm saying? You want to sit up there, you want to sit back and think how y'all look in old age with grown kids. You know, you gotta be content. A lot of y'all, you lust out the other men. Oh, I know what I wanted now. Please ask these five. A lot of sisters lust out the other brothers because they ain't content with their husband. That's why a lot of sisters, they come into this truth. And instead of getting the brother that, that's with them in the world, time to grow spiritually. Everybody ain't going to grow. Some people, it's going to take a year, y'all. It's going to take a year and a half. Sister, you might hear the truth today. And you took it to him tomorrow like he want to listen. Now you want to leave, him, not knowing. And I had a sister, she did that before. She ended up left in the brother. They ended up coming into the truth later. But hell, by, by that time, she done laid down with a brother in the body. And the sister whole, you know, sister destroyed her whole life behind that move right there. And I gave the sister counsel. I said, look, sis, you need to just be patient. I'm like, get that man time. That sister was like four, five months in. She was like, no, if he ain't going to move at my pace, this, that, and that. I'm like, all right, you're a grown woman. You don't have to take my uh, counsel. You know? And uh, she destroyed her own life behind that. Because then, when the stuff didn't work out with the brother and the truth, who she tried to run back to? The brother that learned slow. The brother that learned slow. And there's a scripture about that in Ecclesiastes. First, let me read this because I was talking about y'all dreams. Y'all dreams. A lot of y'all, you be sitting up there, you wonder why you're having dreams about sex all the time. This it is. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4. It's saying, I mean, verse 3. For a dream coming through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. You hear they say a dream coming through the multitude of business you know what i'm saying a lot of the things that you was doing that day will make you especially you brothers if you sitting up there uh you brothers and sisters if y'all watching porn or if you watching things that uh got a lot of uh what's the word i'm looking for that that uh they got trying a lot of sexual content in it if you watching things that got a lot of sexual content in it then when you go to sleep at night here, you'll be dreaming about sex. You was wondering why you was dreaming about sex. And I'm going to tell you this too, man. Esau knows what he's doing with his commercials that be on TV. You know what I'm saying? I forgot what they called it. Uh, they call it something. I'm trying to think. Y'all know what I'm looking for. The word I'm looking for when subliminal messages. Subliminal messages. Esau put a lot of subliminal messages in his commercials. You know what I'm saying? Uh, his billboards, everywhere you go to keep you lusty. So you gonna bow to lust to the end. It is what it is. You gonna bow to lust until the end. You know what I'm saying? And that's uh, the scriptures say that in Galatians five. The, the spirit gonna lust against the flesh, and the flesh gonna lust against the spirit. You know what I'm saying? So now let me read this again. Um, so in order to bow to your lust, you gotta learn to be content. You got to be learned to be satisfied. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn to be in a state of peace and happiness. A lot of you brothers, you lust out the other women. Why? Because you ain't satisfied with the wife you got now. You know what I'm saying? You think if uh, you was to get another wife, you think things would be better. You know what I'm saying? I want to get some synonyms 
for content. It's a contentment, satisfaction, fulfillment. You know what I'm saying? You got to have, okay, let's say, okay, in marriage, you got to have this sense of fulfillment with dealing, you know what I'm saying, with dealing with your wife. The same thing, sisters, you got to have this, uh, this sense of fulfillment. Let's look up the word fulfillment. Fulfillment. It said achievement of something desired, promise of predicted. You see that it said the achievement of something. You got to understand, hey, this my portion. Go there real quick to Ecclesiastes. You got to be fulfilled. Okay, this my portion. This what the most I gave me. And you got to be, you know what I'm saying? You got to, you got to uh, have this sense of fulfillment behind that. Ecclesiastes 7. Is it seven? Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get it. I think it's eleven, verse nine. No, hold on, hold on, y'all. It might be two and fifteen. No, I thought it was six, seven. Uh, y'all, give me a minute. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. Ooh, uh, hold on, y'all. Let me Google this real quick. Let me Google it. I thought I had it. I thought I was just there. Uh, let me Google it. Ah, oh, hold on. It's a please ask these nine and nine. I right, here you go. Ecclesiastes 9 and 9. Live joyfully with the uh with the wife. You know what I'm saying? Live joyfully with your wife. The same thing. So the Bible is written in a masculine context, but it's talking to you too. Live joyfully with your husband. It says, live joyfully with the wife. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of the uh all the days of the life of thy vanity. Which he have given thee under the sun all the days of thy life. For that is thy portion in this life. You got to be fulfilled with what the most high bless you with. You got to be satisfied with your husband and with your wife. You got to be like, hey, look, hey, this is what the most high gave me. Little joyful. I know some of y'all, but I don't love the I don't love them. Cow, I don't love them. Cow, I don't love her. Well, you need to find something that you love about her. You need to find something that you love about him. And then that's the things you magnify right there. And everything else, you got to work through it. You know, let's read on. It say, for that is thy portion in this life and in thy labor, which thou takest under the sun. The Lord said, that's your portion. You know what I'm saying? Live joyfully. That's your portion. You got to understand, hey, look, this is my portion that God has given me. And look, uh, I thank the Lord for it. And I'm satisfied. I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? For real. Um, hold on, hold on. I want to read. Let me see. This, this what I expected. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it's going to be issues in marriage, y'all. It's going to be issues in marriage. You know what I'm saying? You got to have fulfillment. I want to read this. The meat of requirement or condition. Uh, satisfaction or happiness as a result of fully developing one's abilities or characters. One, the achievement of something desired, promised, or predicted. You want it to a husband, you got it. You achieved that. So you need to have that, that, sense, that, that sense of fulfillment. You want it to a wife, you got that. You need to have that sense of fulfillment. You need to be content with the wife you got. You need to be content with the husband that you got. You know what I'm saying? You need to be content. This your portion. That's your portion that was given you. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is vanity. Everything else is vanity. All right. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, hold on. Let me go back to content. Let's look up content again. Uh, they say in a state of peaceful happiness, satisfied with a certain level of achievement, good fortune, etc., and not wishing for more. You see that? Not wishing for more. Oh, I want another wife. If you're going around saying, oh, I want another wife, 
or if you got the thoughts in your head you you want another husband guess what now you're gonna start to lust because satan already know what you like Satan know you better than you know you so here come this spirit of lust why because you ain't satisfied with your husband <coughs> you ain't satisfied with your wife Now you're thinking about another man. Now you're thinking about another sister. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I'm, you know, uh, I'm sticking with marriage like this because, man, look, hey, brothers and sisters, they be battling in this truth, especially in marriage. Especially when it comes to marriage. Go from there to Sirach real quick. I mean, go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Listen to what Paul said. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. You see that? He said, I learned to be content in whatsoever state I am. I'm going to be content. Okay, you in this truth, you just got married. Here comes Satan to try to marry. You probably thinking that this brother when the brother you want. This sister ain't the sister that you wanted. Why y'all didn't had a big argument? You know what I'm saying? Now your marriage, your marriage is being tried now. Remember, go to Acts 14, verse 22. Now your marriage is being tried. Now you feeling like, hey, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> Which you should understand that the Lord brought y'all together. You know what I'm saying? If you keep that thought in your head, hey, the most I brought us together. The most I brought us together. Acts chapter 14, verse 22, confirming the soul of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in faith. And then we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. You see that through much tribulation, y'all, through much tribulation, through much tribul tribulation. All right, brother X, okay, what, what about when you're single, that in lust? All right, here we go. Let's go here. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. What about when you're single, battling lust? Bro, you got to be learn to be content with being a single brother. I'm going to show you this right here. You got to be, remember, Paul said, whatsoever state I'm in, whatsoever state I'm in, he learned to be content. So now you're a single brother. Let's get 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And this one, you single brothers and single sisters. First Corinthians chapter 7. And let's start to at verse 27. Are they bound into a wife? Seek not to be loose. You hear that, brothers? Be content. You got a wife, be content with the wife that you got. Don't seek to be loosed. Don't seek another wife. Don't go out here lusting after other women. Be content. Okay, yeah, you having issues. She can't stop running her mouth. Guess what, brothers? You're going to have to sit up there. Hey, you're going to have to uh, learn how, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you're going, you probably going to have to battle with this woman until the mouth is to do. It ain't nothing but a trial. The scripture tell us about setting our house in order. So guess what? Sometimes it's a battle to set the house in order. If she love the Lord, she gonna realize, hey, I'm running off at the mouth too much. I gotta fix this. If she love the Lord, she gonna read the scripture where it says, silent and loving woman is a guilt. And she'll start, she'll start to look and say, damn, I am not a guilt of the Lord. If she's not a reason within herself, let's read. Some stuff y'all got to understand, man, in a relationship, you don't got no control over it. That's why I think a lot of y'all failing in y'all marriages in this truth. Because you can't, con like me, I know personally, I can't control a woman's mouth. I can be like, look, be quiet, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> she got to take it upon herself to say, hey, he don't want to hear it, I'm going to be quiet. But if she take it upon herself to keep going back and forth with me, you know what I'm saying? I don't got no control over what this woman doing. 
All I can do is sit up there and, you know, hey, Lord. All I can do is pray to the Lord and ask the Lord, hey, Lord, please, Lord. Uh, look, heal the, look, uh, remove any iniquity from my household. That's it. That's all I can do. And pray and hope that, and, and read, take her through the scripture, show her what she's going off at, and pray and hope she learn for herself. I'll tell anybody, if they, man, if your wife ain't trying to learn these scriptures for herself, then you got a problem. Yes, you 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 teach her, but just like when you go to any school or anything and you learn something, what you do, you study it. So she got to be at, she got to study it also. So still dealing with the single brother. All right, verse 27, 1 Corinthians 7 and 27. Are thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loose. You hear that? Don't seek to be loose. It's a, art thou loose from a wife? Seek not a wife. You hear that, uh, Judah, Ben Israel? This is for you single brothers. They say, look, hey, don't seek to be married. This is for you single sisters. Don't seek to be married. Be content where you at. Why? Let's jump down real quick to verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. The time is short, y'all. We got work to do. Hey, we fight amongst each other. We need to, hey, we fight amongst each other. We got a lot of work to do. We fight amongst each other, and we still got people that need to wake up. We still ain't got a one-third of Israel yet. Don't seek to be bound to a wife. Don't seek to be bound to a husband. A lot of y'all don't know what you're asking for. All right, let's read on. They say, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remained that both they that had wives be as though they had none. So now the brothers who married, they got to move like they don't got a wife. Why? The time is short. It's work to do. It's a lot of work to do, single brothers and single sisters. Look, let's jump down real quick to verse, uh, let me see, let me see, 32. But I have, I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. So you need to be content in the state of pleasing the Lord, not seeking the wife. See, you ain't content with that. You want a wife, you want it. That's how we get. I was a single brother too. <laughs> I was a single brother at one, one point of time. You know, you thinking of you all lonely at night. Now you're like, man, you need a wife. You lonely at night when you can sit up there and say, hey, look, let me study. Let me get these scripts down pat. You know what I'm saying? Let me learn this history. If you ain't read the Bible, let me read the whole Bible front to back. You know what I'm saying? Let me put together some classes for when uh when it for when my ministry come. You know, you can be pushing this truth to another level, y'all single brothers and single sisters. But you gotta learn to be content in that state. If you ain't learned to be content in that single state, then guess what? You're gonna sit up there, you're gonna go lusty. You're going to see a sister, you're going to see brothers, and you're going to go lusty. Let's read this real quick. But I would have, but I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, cared for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. That's for you single brothers and single sisters. You single brothers, you worried about how to please the Lord right now. They say verse 33. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how you may please his wife. And that's the truth. My wife says she want a new stove. We got to get a new stove. Hell, she says she want uh, a wardrobe. We got to get a wardrobe. <laughs> now she's talking about a refrigerator. Hell, we got to get refrigerators. Hell, she says she wanted couches. We had to get couches. <laughs> for real. She says she needs some more shoes. Got to get some more shoes. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's things that, you know what I'm saying? And it's sad. Let's read it again. But he that it is mad, care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. You see that? Now, nah, bro, now you got to deal with worldly things now. Because if you got an old stove, yeah, you want to get a new stove. Yeah, you want to cook the Sabbath food on a good new stove, hell, yeah. or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You got to do things that's pleasing. 
You know, I'll tell anybody, take the bullets out the gun. Let's read on. First thirty four. There's a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cared for the things of the Lord that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is mad cared for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. You see, sis? Now you got all the time in the world to study now. Some of you sisters be talking about, oh, I want to go on fly missions and I want to be a mother to the sisters and all the rest of that stuff. Well, you got your chance right now to study. You don't got a husband that you got to look after. Once you get a husband, now you got to look after your husband. Now you got to do things that's pleasing for your husband. So you single brothers and you single sisters, you need to be content in your single state. And there's you serving the Lord with all your heart, all your might. Y'all should have no, you single brothers and sisters should have no excuse why you ain't going hard as hell in this truth. I can understand with people that's married because now they, they the only spirit that you single brothers and sisters got to worry about, that's the ones who don't got no kids, is your spirit. Now, some of y'all that got kids, okay, you got other spirits to deal with as well. You know, so be content, Judah, be content. All right, uh, let me see, let me see. Where was that? All right, go from there to Sirach, chapter 40, verse 18. So to overcome your lust, y'all, to battle your lust, you got to learn to be content. You got to be learn to satis be satisfied in the state that you're in. You know what I'm saying? For real. You're a single brother in this truth. Be satisfied being a single brother in this truth. Do this work. Push this work. Uh, go to Sirach 40, verse 18. Push this truth to the ends of the earth. Oh, man, you single brother in this truth, you can travel everywhere. You can be in a different city every week. Every weekend, you can go visit a different congregation. So Rock chapter 40, verse 18. To labor and to be content with that a man have is a sweet life. You see that? You got to be content with what you got. Paul said he learned that. Paul said he learned that, you know what I'm saying, to be content in whatever state you in. Let's read that again. To labor and to be content with that a man have is a sweet life, but he that found founded a treasure is above them both. You know what I'm saying? So to labor to be content is a sweet life. It's sweet life. We got to learn to be content, Israel. The reason why we ain't lusting because, hey, we ain't content in the state that we in. Now, not to be saying you're supposed to be content in a poor state. What are the scriptures that about that? It's a scripture about that, not to be content in a poor state. Let me see. I, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. I can't think of it right now. But uh, you don't supposed to be content in a poor state, meaning... Hey, you homeless and be content with being homeless. No. The scriptures say, hold on, look, jump down real quick to Ecclesiastes chapter 40, verse 28. Because some, some people take what I'm saying. Oh, I'm, I'm a bum right now. I'm going to be content with being a bum. Hell no, the Lord don't move like that. This to this. Ecclesiastes chapter 40, verse 28. My son, lead not a beggar's life. For better is it to die than to beg. You see that? You do not want to live a life like a bum. He says it's better to die than to be living a beggar's life, to be a bum. The life of a man that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. For he polluted himself with other men's meat. But a wise man well nurtured will be worth. There of you see that a wise man well nurtured who know how to take care of himself he's gonna be worth. I had to get on somebody about this the other day. One of my family members living in a homeless shelter. I never thought I'd see it, and I was like, man, look. First and foremost, he don't want to keep the commandments, you know. And so now I'm trying to get him to the point where I get him to repent because he's talking about God and stuff. Now some people sometimes people gotta wait to hit rock bottom. For them to sit up there to find the Lord, you know, and if this, this person that been there for me half of my life. So I said, I'll be damned if I'm going to see you in this state right here when I know you can do better. 
when I know when uh, I went through trials and tribulations in the world, you was there for me. So I'm trying to help pull them up out of that slump and teach them the word of God at the same time. It say, uh, but then the scripture comes out saying, where well, there's no hedge, the possession is for that thing be hidden me. Hey, that's true, sis. I'm not saying that don't get married. I'm just saying be content right now be, in order to battle lust. That's it. Just in order to buy, battle the lust, be content in the state you in. Uh, the scripture say he that found a wife is a good thing. And just like the scripture you said, sister Addie, uh, when no possession is, the hedge is spoiled. So you correct. The scriptures say marriage is honorable. But the brother had asked me a question about how a single brother lusting in this truth. To, to battle that lust, he got to be satisfied being in that single state right now. You know what I'm saying? The most high, uh, remember, the most high create just like you, Sister Addie. If you single, the Lord created a man for you. I mean, uh, you was created for a man. Just like Judah. Judah, a woman was created for you. You know what I'm saying? Go from there, y'all, to Sirach 29. So you got to be content. In order to stop lusting, you got to be satisfied in the state that you're in. Some of y'all, you got, you already driving what? You already driving, let's just say, a 2013 uh, Chevrolet. 2013 Chevrolet. You already got a nice car. But you seen that new car come out, 2019. Let's say if it's a uh, Jaguar. I said Camaro. You seen the 2019 Camaro come out, and now you want it. Now you starting to desire it, and you you want it bad. You know what I'm saying? Now you trying to do whatever you can do to get it. You'll take extra hours working the Sabbath. Now you'll work on the Sabbath. Why? Because of your lust, this strong desire for that car. Instead of being content with what you got. Hey, look, I've got this thing right here. It's a 2013. It's paid off. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy. Some of y'all, you already got a good job making, let's just say, $75,000 a year. All your bills is paid. You got a nice car. You can provide the chief things in life. Let's get that real quick. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verse 21. It say the chief thing for life is water and bread. So you able to provide food and clothing. You able to provide clothing and a house to cover shame. You able to provide all these things. It's in a house to cover shame. Uh, so them are the chief things of life right there. You able to provide all these things. You got all these things. But you seen a bigger house. You already got a nice house. Four bedroom, two bath. But for some reason, you got to have that eight bedroom, four baths. And you lusting after it, and when you start to lust after it, there's no strong sexual desires, it start to draw you away from God. Why? Because you're going to start doing things to sit up there to achieve that. Some people break the Sabbath. Why? To work them extra hours or to get that bigger house, they'll sit up there and say, okay, I'm making 75000 a year. Well, in order for me to have this house, I need to be making at least 150000 a year. And uh, it's a position open here. I think I'm going to sit up there. It's a position open here, but it requires me to work the Sabbath. Now, a lot of y'all don't know how important it is to keep Sabbath. A lot of y'all don't know how important it is for us to keep the Sabbath. Every Sabbath is like a spiritual reboost. I come in, I see the people's faces. Hell, I'm happy up in this journey. For real, it's a, it's a day of rest on rest, and I ain't worried about nothing I went through the whole week. Now it's time to hear the scriptures come out to be built up in the spirit to sit up there to go a whole nother week. But since you weren't content, you know what I'm saying? You weren't content being able to provide food, clothing, and having a house already. 
you decide to take that job on the Sabbath, let's just say if you don't pay number 25,000 more. Why? Because you still got that lust in you where you want another house or you still think it's better things out here. This ain't our rest. Let's get that real quick in Micah chapter 4. <coughs> I got to Google this one. I think it's Micah 2. Micah 2 verse 10. Y'all got to understand, this ain't our rest. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest because it is polluted. Y'all got to think, y'all got to understand, Satan is ruling her. Everything that Satan does, I mean, everything that's set up in this kingdom is to destroy you. Everything that's set up in this kingdom is polluted. And it's to destroy you. Let's read it. Arise ye and depart. But this is not your rest. Because it is polluted. It shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. So now you want to make that extra money. You, you breaking the Sabbath now. Man, you know how many people I've seen start working the Sabbath and fell out the truth? They come in the truth not working the Sabbath, then start working the Sabbath, and then they fall. You don't hear from them no more. What happened to brother such and such? What happened to sister such and such? Hell, you heard about one sister was one sister that uh hell that went on a spree talking about us. What happened? She started working the Sabbath. The Spirit of God left her. And some of us, the Lord know if we got now, I ain't saying for you brothers and sisters that gotta work the Sabbath. I'm talking about you brothers and sisters that ain't content with what you got because you lusting after other things. Let me read this again. Ecclesiastes chapter 29, verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. Bed is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fur in another man's house. Be it little or much, hold thee contented that thou hear not the reproach of thy house. You see that we got to be content with what we got. We got to be content with what we got. Okay, you might uh got you a small apartment. But hey, it's your apartment and the bills paid and you can fix it up to look however you want to look. And it ain't that many. It ain't number two and probably your wife. Y'all supposed to be content with that. Don't go lusting after other things to the point where it makes you fall. Be content. Wait till the most high uh, open some doors for you. You know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah, it ain't nothing wrong with wanting to strive to do better. I don't want to get up out of this little apartment. I want to get something else nice. But make sure you be content with what you got. So when the blessing come through, you don't sit up there and... Uh, be breaking God's commandments. Let me uh go from there to uh let me see, let me see. Go to Hebrews 13, verse 5. So we're still dealing with being content. You want to battle your lust, you got to learn to be content. Romans 6, verse 5. 12. Romans 6, verse 12. No, no, I want Romans 6, verse 12. I want Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Some of y'all, you sit up there, you lust after, you bout a strong sexual desires because you ain't satisfied with your partner. Some of you sisters, oh, he ain't big enough for me. So as you got a whole damn baby that come up out of there, ain't nothing big enough for you. <laughs> Let me be quiet. <laughs> hey, y'all know I can go left field with this thing. <laughs> for real. Hey, you better learn how to work uh, what he got. You better learn how to work with what he got. The same thing with you brothers. For real. You ain't desired with your wife. I mean, uh, you ain't satisfied with the wife you got. Y'all got to learn how to be satisfied with each other. Learn 
how to please one another. Learn how to please one another. But since y'all don't want to learn how to please one another, don't want to take the time to sit down and talk. Because that's what, uh, remember I did a class, uh, 10 ways to make, make your marriage last long. One of the things is communication. Learn what's satisfying to them. And y'all learn to please each other. Why? So y'all won't go lusting. For real, you got to be satisfied with the size of your woman butt, brothers. Oh, her butt too small. What the hell? Bro, be satisfied with that little booty. Oh, her breasts too little. Bro, be satisfied with those little breasts. <laughs> I know y'all like this too crazy as hell. Man, I'm dead serious though. Be content with what you got. The same thing, sis. He ain't packing downtown. So be satisfied with what he got. Learn how to use that. Hebrews 13, verse 5. It says, Let your conversations be with let your conversation be without covetousness. Hey, you better be careful who you're talking to, too. Some of y'all you lusting because you're around the wrong people. That conversation is all covetous. Remember what the Lord said. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus chapter 37. I'm going to show y'all something about that evil communication too. Ecclesiasticus chapter 37. Is it 37? Or is it 9? Hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. I think it's 9. Let me look at 9 first. Nine in verse 15. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. Let thy talk be with the wise, and all thy communication in the law of the most high. Some of y'all you go a lusting because people come around you with their covetous spirit on them, and that's all they're talking about. Oh man, yeah, I want this new car, and this deal with that, and I'm got a new house, and this and that, and I want this, and I want that. All they're doing is talking about the things that they desire, the things that they desire. One script ain't came out. What the script is that? Not one script is coming out. Then you wonder why uh, you is uh, now you wonder why this that uh, you lusted not. Why you talking about you want another house or you want another car or you want some more clothes? Cause y'all communication ain't in the laws of the Most High. Your conversation is all covetousness. It said, let your conversation be without covetousness. Oh, man, we're back to Hebrews 13 and 15. I mean, Hebrews 13 and 5. Go back to Hebrews 13 and 5. Hey, all praises, Malachi. <laughs> all praises, bro. It's a bless. All right, where we at? No, nah, we was in Sirach 9 and 15. Now I'm going back to uh, Hebrews 13, verse 5. It said, let your conversation be without covetousness. So your, your, your conversation should be, uh, your communication should be in the laws of the most high. I'm going to show you something about that evil communication. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14. I think it's 14. It might be 15, y'all. Let me look at it. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. You see that? Evil communication corrupt good manners. So if somebody's sitting up there, they coming with that covetous conversation all the time, guess what it's going to do? If you was content with what you got, it's going to start to corrupt that good manner. You're going to start to lust. That's what happened to that's that's one of the reasons Israel fell in the wilderness. Let's get it. Let's go to Numbers real quick, chapter 11. Because it's it's something y'all be reading the past 
in Numbers 11, it's a thing y'all be reading past. Check this out. Let's start at verse 1. Numbers 11, verse 1. That's why uh, I like to read for myself. Because sometimes when we be reading, or we have others read for us, hell, they read fast. They'll read over certain things and you'll miss it. Listen to this. Numbers 11, verse 1. And when we and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. So they complained, and the Lord said, Hey, look, I'm gonna destroy some, I'm gonna kill some of these people. Israel got the complaint. Lord said, I'm going to kill some of these people. Moses prayed, and the Lord took the fire away. Verse 3. And he called the name of the place Tabarah, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. And the mixed multitude, now listen to this, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lust. And the church of Israel also wept again. So now, we had these nations with us, and they fell a lusting. Now we do it again. The Moses just prayed to have the fire quenched from amongst us. So now, we got these nations with us, because they want to run out with us when we left. We had somebody had to be the slaves, though. And when we set up, when we get to the land, Hell, somebody had to be the slaves in the wilderness. Hell, it is what it is. <coughs> they fell in lust, and then we followed right after them. You see how that evil communication can corrupt good manners? It's a, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell in lust, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, who should give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, which, were, uh, uh, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. They're supposed to be content with that manna. The Most High gave it to them to be content. Hold on, let me find this scripture. I'm going to show it to you. I think it's Wisdom of Solomon 16. Hold on, let me find it. Y'all give me a minute. He gave them that manna to be content. And all the mixed multitude fell a lusting. They fell a lusting right behind the mixed multitude. Let's go to, uh, now he gave them quails for content. But still, let's get there. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 19, verse 12. I still want to get there. The things the most I was giving us in the wilderness, he wanted us to be content with it. Wisdom of Solomon 9, and I might jump up. I, I mean, 19. I might jump up, y'all. Let me look at it. And I'm going to say I might jump up a little bit. So, y'all, to overcome, to battle your lust, you got to learn to be content. Learn to be satisfied with what you got. Wisdom of Solomon 19. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think where I want to start at, y'all. I'm looking at it. Let's start in verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 19, verse 11. But afterwards, they saw a new generation of fowls. When being led with, the with, with their appetite, they asked delicate meats. For quails came up unto them from the sea for their contentment. That's why the Most High gave us these things in the wilderness. He gave you mountain in the wilderness to be content. He gave you whales, quails to be content. But what we kept doing, we kept... Lusting. 
we kept lusting. We weren't content with what the most high, none of the stuff the most high gave us. Just like now, nah, some of y'all ain't content with what the most high gave you. I think, yeah, I think the mountain tasted like whatever they wanted it to taste like. <laughs> I think it was it the mountain. Yeah, it was the mountain. Hold on, let me go back. Let's get there real quick. I got to read it now. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back to numbers. Hold on, hold on. Let's go to Exodus 16, verse 14. Exodus 16, verse 14. And when the dew, and when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is mountain. For they was not that it was, and Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord have given you to eat. It say, this is the thing which the Lord have commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take you every man for them which are in his tents. Now, hold on, hold on. Let me jump over real quick to 16 verse 31. Let me see. 16 verse 31. Let me make sure. And the Moses and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, and it was like corn to see white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So hold on, I know what scripture you're talking about. See, I gotta get it now, Ferez. I gotta get it. See, now you're gonna make me find this scripture. What the one that said, I forgot. I'm trying to think, was it manna that tasted like whatever they want to taste like? I gotta think about it. Let me see. Uh, I'll come. Let me go to Wisdom of Solomon. This is Wisdom of Solomon. Let me see. Wisdom of Solomon. Or oh, it could be in Psalms 107. All right, y'all, look, I'm wasting too much time on it, man. It's in there somewhere. It's in there. I know what he's talking about. I don't know if it was the man or not, but I'm thinking it's in Wisdom of Solomon. So now, where I was at, go right back. So, yeah, he gave us the manna. He gave us the quail. He gave us all of that stuff for our contentment. He gave us all of that stuff for our contentment. Oh, there you go. LK, now all praise it. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 20. Instead of well, thou fedest thy own people with angels' food, and this sends them from heaven bread prepared without their labor, able to content every man's delight and agreeing to every taste. You see that? So the most high gave us that to be content. All oh, praises, LK9, because hell, I couldn't find it. Okay, Gamaliel put it up there. All oh, praises, y'all. Y'all in the spirit. Yep. He gave us the so it could taste. How you want it to taste. Hell, I did a class about that before. It's crazy. I couldn't find the scripture. All right, where we at? Go right. So now, remember, so that mixed multitude fell a lusting amongst us. We fell a lusting. So when you're around the wrong people, guess what? When you're around the wrong people, if they cause you to offend, then you need to separate. Let's go to uh, Matthew real quick, chapter 5. If you got people that stop causing you to fall in lusting because their conversation is always covetous, then listen to this. And now you wonder why some of y'all be like, man, I wasn't thinking like this. Why I'm thinking like this? You thinking like that because you're around the wrong people. Evil communication can rub good mouth. Look at how the most high just jacked the children of Israel up. The mixed multitude fell in lust and now they go a lusting again. 
and he had already gave them first he gave them the quails for to be content with now they lust for some more stuff he gave them manna to be content with and then they got to complaining about the manna the manna tasted like whatever you want it to taste like the Lord like to be content with this. If hey, you want this to taste like uh, chicken, it's going to taste like chicken. If you want it to taste like lamb, it's going to taste like lamb. If you're a vegan, if you're a vegan, if you want this to taste like a, a, a cucumber, it's going to taste like a cucumber. It's going to taste like the leeks and the melons. Be content. All right, here we go. Uh, Matthew 5, verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is probable for thee that one of thy members should perish and that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So guess what? If uh, if uh, if a brother and sister conversation covetous and it's causing you to offend, the scripture saying you got to cut them off from among you. And let them know, hey, look, your conversation too covetous. When you repent of that covetous conversation, then we'll be uh now nah, you throw me off a rest. I'm glad you brought that out. All praise to the most high. I'm glad you brought that out because it ain't do nothing but help out with the class. The scripture says a wise man heard a word and add to it. He heard a word and add to it. So all praises for rest. You throw me off. That was right on time, actually. All right, where we at? So the scripture say. Look, if you do got that brother, sister around you that got that covetous conversation, then hell, you need to cut them off from among you. You know what I'm saying? That could corrupt your good mouth. You know what I'm saying? Cause the judgment to come upon you, just like judgment came upon the church in Israel in the wilderness. All right, look, let's go from there real quick to First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six. So y'all, what we doing? What uh, we've been discussing for a lot of y'all that long been late is how to battle lust. And to battle your lust, you got to learn to be content. You know what I'm saying? You got to be learn to be content with the wife you got. Learn to be content with the husband you got. You know what I'm saying? Learn to be content when it comes to sex, when it comes to food. A lot of y'all, you overweight. Why? Because you ain't content with the meal you just had. You go a lusting for more. You just ate a steak dinner with a baked potato and uh and broccoli but you're like oh man it wasn't good enough now you want uh, uh now you want chicken and rice then you eat the chicken and rice and you were like hey this ain't fulfilling this one fulfilling now you got to taste for some damn tacos and then you wonder why you 400 pounds because you ain't satisfied or content with the things that you ate early you need to learn how to rule matter of fact let me get that real quick and that's what with all of us we need to learn how to rule our appetites go to uh <coughs> Sirach 18 verse 30. we need to learn how to refrain thyself refrain thyself so rock 18 verse 30. it say go not after thy lust but refrain thyself from thy appetites. You see that? Refrain thyself. Let's look up the word refrain. 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 Okay. Okay, refrain. Stop oneself from doing something. You got to stop yourself from doing that. So let's just say if you overweight. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 20. No, I think it's 31. Ecclesiastes chapter 31. Let's start at 12. It says, If thou sit at a bountiful table, be not greedy upon it, and say not there is much meat on it. That's why, man, like buffet, woo. That all you can eat buffet can sit up there. Hey, <laughs> all right, you crazy. The big belly boys. That's what we call them in Memphis, y'all. The big belly boys. You see, okay, let's just say you go to a buffet. The scriptures say, be not greedy upon it and say not there's much meat on it. Man, y'all, I remember when 
when I was in the world, we'd go to the buffet. We like, hey, look, I'm gonna eat my money's worth. We used to say, look, I'm gonna eat till my stomach hurt. For real, how many of y'all in the world had that spirit on you? You went to all you can eat buffet. You said you was gonna eat till you couldn't eat no more. That was against the scriptures. The Lord said, don't be greedy upon it when you had a bountiful table. You know what I'm saying? Let's read on. Remember that a remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing. And what is created more wicked than the eye? Therefore, it weepeth upon every occasion. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you got to be, hey, that's where your lust started. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. I got uh, two classes called, is it called the evil eye? Part one and part two, they on blog talk. They some good classes. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back and listen to them today. I'm supposed to be traveling anyway, so I'm going to listen to them today. But go to blog talk radio and just type in my name and uh, do some good class. I think it's called the lustful, yeah, it's called the lustful eye part one and the lustful eye part two. Do some good classes. Showing you how everything starts with the eyes. Showing you how a lot of the things that you deal with is start with the eyes. Just like a brother. Like I said, we're dealing with your wife. You know what I'm saying? Some of you brothers, hey, you don't like. Uh, some of you brothers, your wife booty ain't big. And you lusting out the big booty. That start with the eyes. You got to be content with the little booty your wife got. You got to be content. Thankful, satisfied, and fulfilled with that. The same with you sisters. Some of you sisters, you you mad, you you ain't satisfied because your 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 husband he ain't ripped all up and you know <laughs> and he shaped like an egg. Well, sis, guess what, sis? You gotta be content and satisfied. With the egg you got. <laughs> hey, y'all just tripping, man. I'm tripping. But no, you know what I'm saying? The Lord's willing, you know, you can encourage him to work out. But he got to want to do it for himself. That's what y'all got to understand. People got to want to do it for, for themselves. Everything is a small, I mean, everything starts right here with the mind, y'all. Remember that. It all starts with your mind. It all starts with your thoughts. Let's go to James 1 and 12. We're going to come back here in Ecclesiasticus. Go to James 1 and 12. It started with your mind. It started with your thoughts. So you can desire your wife to lose weight, and you can have a desire for your husband to lose weight. But hell, it, it ain't his thought process, you know. Matter of fact, this is the wrong scripture to be putting right now. I'm, I'm going to come back to James 1. If it ain't they, if it ain't in their thought process to want to get out and lose weight, then it ain't gonna happen. You can encourage them and try to exhort them, but first and foremost, they gotta want to do it. They gotta be here. All right, let's go right back to Ecclesiastes chapter thirty-one because we're dealing with food now. And said, so remember that a wicked eye is an evil thing, and what is created more wicked than? The eye, therefore, weep it upon every occasion before everything that is presented. Oh, I want that. All oh, I want this. All oh, I want that. Everything that's presented, it wants. You want. Stretch not thy hand, whether so ever it look it, and thrust it not with him into the dish. Just like when some of y'all go to a buffet. You, hey, you see, look, you look at that, you want that. You look at that, you want that. You look at that, you want that. It weep it upon every occasion. Now you wonder why you at the house stopped up and now your stomach hurting. You can't sleep. The scriptures speak about that too. It says, judge of thy neighbor by thyself and be discreet in every point. Eat as becoming a man those things which are set before thee and devour not lest thou be hated. Man, I used to have to get on a brother all the time. He was greedy as hell. The sisters uh, sit up there and pass out the Sabbath food. He'll get his plate, he'll devour. And before the sisters eat, this brother already want number two. Everybody else still eating, bro. <laughs> I'm like, bro, as you eating at home as you did. He's like, yeah, I'm eating at home. I'm like, what the hell going on? You know, he just greedy as hell. That's all it was. 
This ain't the eyes have you committing all manners of sin without action because the thought is the sin a lot of uh the sin a lot of a lot of us in. That's true. And it start with the thoughts. Start with your thoughts. Start with that I. Look at the uh class I did called the Lust for I Part One and Part Two. I think I did that in 2015. Where we at? It said, leave off first for matter's sake and be not unsatiable, lest thou fear. Let's look up the word unsatiable. Be not unsatiable. Unsatiable. Hold on, hold on, y'all. Don't get in there. Uh, unsatiable, impossible to satisfy. So he said, look, be content. Eat and be content. Eat and be content. Don't be insatiable, impossible to satisfy. Of, then it say, of a person having an insatiable appetite or desire for something, especially sexually. Don't be insatiable. Uh, insatiable. Be satisfied with what you got. When it comes to sex with your partner, learn to be satisfied. Learn to be satisfied. Y'all got to learn to satisfy each other. And that comes with communication, speak. So then when you can be content, you won't go and lust. But since you ain't satisfied with what your partner got, for real, okay, he might be 10 pounds overweight. Okay, you like him. Okay, your husband. Let's just say your husband, 180. You like him at 165. Since he might be 10 pounds overweight, you got to learn to be satisfied with that. You got to tell your husband, hey, look, I like those big juicy arms. I like this stomach that keep me warm or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to learn to be satisfied. Be content with what you got. So that way you won't go unlusted. For real, the same with you uh, brothers that got, okay, your wife, 20, 30 pounds overweight. You know what we used to say in the world, oh, cushion for the pushing. <laughs> hey, you learn to be satisfied with it in the world, but in the truth, now you ain't satisfied with it. Why? Because you sitting up there, since you ain't satisfied and content with how your wife look and what the most I blessed you with, now you sitting up there, you looking at other women. And now you want your your wife to be like her. Because you lusting after other women. That's evil as hell. Hell. All right, where we at? Same thing with food. You know what I'm saying? Don't be unsatiable. Don't be hard to satisfy. Lest thou fear. When thy sin is among many, reach not thy hand out first of all. Because some of y'all, you so greedy, you, you, <clears throat> there it go. You, you the first one to stick your hand out. No, uh -uh. you got to learn to refrain thyself from thy appetite. Learn to refrain thyself from thy appetite. Refrain thyself. What was the word refrain means? Stop oneself from doing something. Withhold thyself back. Uh, avoid it. Stop. Cease. Desist. Hey, LK and I got a song about it. Cease. Desist. All right, where we at? Um, verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. And he fetched not his wind short upon the bed. He ain't lying down puffing and blowing. He ain't lying down puffing and blowing. He fetched not his wind upon the bed. Sound sleep coming of moderate eating. He rises early and his wits are with him. You see when you eat right? Some of y'all wonder why you oversleeping. You are you late for work every morning. Probably because you ate too much the night before. You was greedy as hell. Learn to be content. Uh, what we at? 
Sound sleep coming to moderate E. He rises early and his wits are with him, his thoughts there. But the pain of watching in Coda and pains of the belly are with an unsatiable man, somebody that you can't satisfy. And if thou has been forced to eat, arise, go forth, vomit, and thou shalt have rest. My son, hear me and despise me not. And at the last, thou shalt find as I told thee. And all thy works be quick, so there shall be no sickness come unto thee. Some people battling, uh, some people battling certain sicknesses because they don't know how to be moderate with eat. Because it's certain sicknesses, I got books on it. Like it's certain sicknesses that y'all battling, certain foods you can't eat. You feed the sickness. You is feeding the sickness. I'm telling you right now. That's why have you ever heard people say, look, I'm going to try to starve out cancer. cancer. Why are they starving it out? Because it's certain foods that the cancer is getting nutrients and proteins from to live and to thrive. It said, whoso is liberal of his meat, men shall speak well of him. And the report of his good housekeeping will be believed. You see that? But against him that is a nigger of his meat, the whole shit city shall mumble. And the testimonies of his niggardness <laughs> shall not be doubted of. Everybody know, oh yeah, hey, look at that nigga over there. He eat up everything. <laughs> hey, the Bible said it, y'all. I didn't say it. <laughs> oh man. Hey, what, what we at? So yeah, y'all, we gotta learn to be content, man. Even when it comes to food. A lot of us overweight because we ain't content. We eat one meal and we talk about, hey, we hungry again. We still home. No, a little sufficient for a man we're nurtured. That ain't nothing but us lusting. We overweight because we lust. It. That's it. You know what I'm saying? We see it there and we want it. Hey, I'm telling y'all, man, like the, the corner store, the corner store is the most dangerous place in the neighborhood. <laughs> and the reason why, when you go in, the, when you walk in the corner store, notice it ain't nothing but bad stuff for you. Chips. Sneaker bar, hell, they got cookies. That look, you can't get up out of that thing without being tempted with something. You cannot get up out the corner store with being tempted to some. And then look, out of all the stuff they got in the corner store, notice they got hours and hours of stuff that's bad for your health. And then see, when you get up to the counter, they got the candy there, they got the cookies there, they got the cake there, and then they got like a a, a, a small bowl. With like four bananas and four oranges. And them damn bananas and oranges don't never sell. They just be sitting there. Hey, that's on point, Andre. Hey, their food lust can trigger another form of lust. You sure ain't lying. Sure ain't lying. All right, look, let's go from there, y'all, to Romans 6 and 12. I'm going to get ready to wrap it up in a minute. So, y'all, the battle your lust, you got to learn to be content. Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin reign, therefore, in your mortal body, that you should obey in it the lust thereof. So you don't supposed to obey your lust, y'all. You're supposed to refrain yourself. Don't obey your lust. Refrain yourself. Mortify your members. Get there in Colossians 3, verse 5. Mortify your members. Colossians chapter 3. And verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. You see, that's a do. Mortify. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Notice it said covetousness. Covetousness, that's your lust. That's your lust. Let's get that Romans 7 and 7. Your lust is idolatry. Romans 7 and 7, or your covetousness is idolatry. Romans 7 and 7. When shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. For I have not known lust, except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. 
You see that? Another word for covet is lust. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. I'm scrolling down. Uh, honey, but ma'am, hey, look, Sister Shirley, I love me. A honey bun in the microwave <laughs> for 15 seconds. Hey, I said, my honey bun. Oh, man. Hey, y'all see? Y'all less than nine. Look at these brothers and sisters. Hey, I told y'all. Hey, look, that, that, that covetous communication. <laughs> <coughs> I'm telling you, hey, look, every time I walk up in that joint, I see the, the damn ice and white honey bun. So I'm going to tell y'all what happened one day, dealing with them honey buns. So I go in the corner store. I'm like, man, look, I know I don't need no honey bun. And then I'm like, all right, I'm going to get a honey bun. But what stopped me from buying a honey bun, his microwave didn't work. So I put it back. I'm like, what the hell with it? But all praise his microwave didn't work. Because then I seen that I really didn't need it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell y'all this, man. In the, only in America we eat junk food the way we eat. You go to these other countries, they ain't eating junk food like that. Only in America we eat junk food like this. You go to Haiti, they ain't eating junk food like that. For real. Only in America we move in that spirit, y'all. For real. That's why they said we some of the fattest people on earth. All right, where we at, y'all? Let's go from there to Romans. Oh, yeah, another way to, to battle your lust, go to Sirach 23 and 6. You got to pray, y'all. You got to pray. Fast in prayer. Fast in prayer. I'm going to get that in Mark, Matthew 2. Let's go to Sirach 23, verse 1. Let's start at 1. O oh Lord, Father and Governor of my whole life, lead me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them, who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over my mind, that they spare me not for my ignorances and it pass not by my sins. Least my ignorances increase and my sins are bound to destruction. And I fall before my adversaries, and my enemy rejoice over me, whose hope is far from thy mercy. So right now, this is a prayer to flee sin. This is a prayer to flee sin. You got to go to the Most High. You got to ask him this. You got to talk to the Lord. You need to have a conversation with the Lord about what you bad about your sins. And ask him to take it away from you. Ask him don't let you fall into it. Verse 4. Oh, Lord, Father and God in my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servant always a haughty mind. You see that? You got to ask the Lord to help you reform your thoughts. Uh, take away the spirit of pride from you. Turn away from me vain hopes. Ask him to take that vanity away from you, the vain hopes. You, their lack of contentment. The lack of contentment is vain hopes and concupiscence. And thou shalt hold him up that his desire is always to serve thee. Let not the greediness of the belly nor lust of the flesh take hold of me. You see that? You got to pray to the Lord and ask him not to let it take hold of you. And give not over me thy servant into an impudent mind. Let's look up the word impudent. Or imp uh, or, or impudent. Impudent or impudent. Y'all know what, what I'm saying. All right. Uh, okay, let's say not showing due respect for another person. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Lacking modesty, obsolete. Okay, I got it. Here you go. Impudent. Hold on, let me see what it say, y'all. Hold on. Um, okay, impudent. Uh, lacking modesty, marked by contemption or cocky boldness of disregard or others. So you you don't want to be given over to an uh, impudent mind. 
Just read on. One minute. What was I at, y'all? Oh, yeah, the prayer. Verse 6. Let not the greediness of the belly, nor the flesh, lust of the flesh take hold of me, and give not over me thy servant into an impotent mind. That's what happened to Eve, y'all. She was given over to an impotent mind because Satan said, look, hey, I'm going to make you, uh, he said, look, if you disobey God, you're going to become wise, you're going to be a God, you ain't going to die, and you're going to walk in truth. You know, say Satan telling some of y'all right now that you ain't in the truth. <laughs> Let's read on verse seven. Hear ye, hear, O ye children, that the discipline of the mouth, he that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. So y'all gotta pray. You gotta pray to the Lord too to uh, not let you fall into that lust. Go from there to Romans chapter thirteen, verse four. I'm gonna wrap it up. Romans thirteen, verse four. You gotta pray. And ask the Lord to uh, make you content and not to have, uh, not to, uh, not to be lustful in your thoughts. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Another way to battle your lust. Okay, uh, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Don't make provisions for the flesh. Don't make provisions for the flesh. When you make provisions for the flesh, meaning you keep you you keep you you keep providing yourself with the things to fall, you gonna fall. Just like we was talking about this a couple months ago. Some of y'all still got your little black book. You don't need that little black book. But why you got that little black book? Why you got it? Because you sitting at the house, you reminiscing. You know what I'm saying? Now you get mad at your husband. You get mad at your wife. Now you're looking through it. You remembering good times. Uh, not good times. You remember lustful times that you had with somebody. Now you're on the phone with them. Now you can fell into adultery. Because some of us be like, oh, it ain't going to be me. It ain't going to be me. You think you're stronger than Satan. It, it will be you. You will be the main one. Hey, man, I'm scrolling down these comments. Y'all still talking about that honey bun. You know what I'm saying? But it'll be, you, you'll be the main one. They said, go ahead and say, y'all don't eat junk like that in Jamaica. Hey, I know. I've been to Jamaica. I already know. For real. On the streets, y'all selling plantain chips. Uh, what's the name of the things that I love? Get up. Smell, I love get ups, mangoes. They eat healthy food. That's why a lot of them be skinny and in shape. But yeah, y'all, don't make provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So let's just say if you battling, if you do got that greedy spirit on you, you know what I'm saying? Or they glutton the spirit on you. You might want to shop differently. Instead of going to spend $200 on grocery, groceries and, and having a, a bountiful table at the house, refrigerator full and all your stuff full, you might want to sit up there and say, okay, let me spend my money like this because I know if I see it here, I'm going to eat it up. Your right eye offended, you got to pluck it out. Hey, my little, all praise. That's the new little black book. That should be the new little black book for brothers. You know what I'm saying? The pre sale book. All praises, Michael Harris. All right, uh, let's go from there to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Then we're going to get 1 Timothy 6, and we're going to wrap it up. Matter of fact, let's get 1 Timothy 6 first. So, yeah, y'all, the battle of your lust, you need to learn to be content with what you got. You're already driving a nice car. Be content with the car you got. Why do you got a strong desire to drive the newest car right now? Trying to keep up with the Jones as you covering what your neighbor got? You already got a nice house right now with enough room. Why is you sitting up there trying to get a bigger house? But you know it's going to take a, a, a more high-paying job for you to work. And you might end up working the Sabbath. 
Now, when you end up working the Sabbath, you might end up falling out the spirit. And if you, when you fall out the spirit, guess what? You can fall out the truth. You know what I'm saying? You sold your soul for nothing. This ain't our rest. It's polluted. All right, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. When you keep the commandments and you be content, that's a great gain. You ain't worrying. You satisfied with what you got. You satisfied with your wife. You satisfied with your kids. You satisfied with your house, your car, you satisfied with your job, and you keeping the commandments, that's a great game right there. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out. Because guess what? When you die, you can't take that house with you. When you, you die, you can't take that car with you. If you die, somebody else is going to have your job. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Why? Because you're chasing that faithful, you lust it. You lust it and you fall into your lust, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while son coveted after. They have erred from the faith. You see what covetousness can do, your lust can do. It can make you error from the faith. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things. You hear that? The Lord said, flee these things. Refrain thy appetite. Don't obey your lust. So mortify your members. Make no provisions for the flesh. Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patient, meekness. Learn to be content. All right, y'all think I'm going to wrap it up with that. Uh, I want to deal with preeminence too. Hold on, let me see some. Let's go back real quick to Second Timothy because some of y'all got a lust for power and fame. You want to be that guy. You want to be that brother. You want to be that sister. And you will do whatever to be that brother and sister. Why? Because you lusting out the fame. You lusting out the power. Why you think some people? Some people leaving the congregation not because of what's going on with another man. Some people leaving the congregation because they got a lust for power and fame. Whatever they lust is, they're trying to fulfill it. You know what I'm saying? All the rest of that stuff be smoke screens. Everybody got something to work on. Everything, everybody got some, something that needs to be fixed. Some men desire to have the preeminence. And it is what it is. They're like, hey, this is the perfect time. I can just use this situation for me to leave so I can do my own thing. Why? Because they want the preeminence. They want to be the head honcho. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. It's saying, and if a man also strive for mastery, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Strive lawfully. It ain't nothing wrong with desiring a certain position or want to be. And the scripture says, if a man desire a role of a bishop, he desire a good work. But if you're going to strive for masteries, you need to do it lawfully. But some of you, you get overtaken in your lust. You don't want to do it lawfully. You don't want to wait. You don't want to be patient. You just want to do your own thing. You don't want to listen to nobody. You know how many brothers that I spoke with that said they don't like the ranking system because they don't want nobody set over them. They do not want nobody set over them. Listen to this. This is dealing with ambition right here. Sirach chapter 7 verse 5. Seek not of the Lord preeminence, neither of the neither of the king the seat of honor. You see that? Don't be seeking the preeminence. Some of y'all got that preeminent spirit on you. You lust them to be on top. You lust them to be the man. You lust them for power. You want to be known. I want to be known for my street teacher. I want to be known for my precepts. And now you, you strive for masters, you don't want to do it lawfully. You know, 
It says, justify not thyself before the Lord and boast not of thy wisdom before the king. Oh, I can teach better than him. I can do this better. I can do that. With that right there, y'all, I think I'm going to wrap it up, man. Did y'all have any questions pertaining to class? Hey, hey, bro, Rican, you on point, bro. Sure. Man, you is on point, man. I, I watched a documentary showing you how they got so much sugar. That's why they put sugar in everything, because they got to get rid of the sugar. And they made a deal. The sugar companies made a deal with the government that the government got to purchase so much amount of sugar, and it's sugar in everything. It's hard to find some without sugar in it. All praises, y'all. So the battle of your lust, you got to learn to be content. Our black people don't like our black people. Hey, you're right. Black people don't like each other, man. It is what it is, man. We hate each other, man. It's crazy as hell. I'm going to tell you how, how you know we hate each other. Black people have been done wrong at, 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 at their jobs. Every last one of you have been wrong at your job before. And after you left that job or was fired from that job, you never did, you never took, you never used, uh, you never used all your might to try to destroy their company. Black people different. We'll destroy one another. You get mad at another, Jake? You will work and spend all your time to destroy that Jake. But that job, though, that wronged you, fired you for no reason, you will not do everything in your power to bring that organization, I mean, bring that corporation down. But yet, people do everything in their power to bring a black organization down that's actually helping people out. It's crazy, y'all. We hate each other. So, sis, you on point. Our people hate each other. <laughs> hey, Tanil said, I feel the captain. I lust after that charger, which is a gas guzzler, when I already got a gas guzzler, my 73 Cadillac to build. I'm gonna tell you this, y'all. So uh I wanted a challenger. Man, I wanted that challenger bad. I saved up the money. I'm gonna buy a cash. But I seen I seen the building. And this before uh I seen the building, and this before we had a lot of people in Memphis. And I had to make a choice. I was like, hey, do I really need because I already had two, three cars, and I had a Mercedes, I had a Pontiac, and I forgot what else I had. I had an old school, I had a couple cars. So I had to make a choice. I was like, hey, is I'm gonna, I said, should I, I said, look, should I buy this damn challenger, which I don't need, or should I purchase a property where we could congregate? So I decided to purchase the car, uh, the, the property. And guess what? We still got the property, but them, all them cars I had, the Mercedes, that Pontiac, all oh, that is gone. And we still we got a place to create all praises. So don't obey your lust. Hey, all praises, y'all. I'm glad this was a good class for y'all. That's right. That Don Trefe spirit, them me, me, me. They gotta have the pad power, the fame. Where can I find the battle in lust one and two? Well, uh, you talk about the lust for I one and two is on blog talk radio. So type in, let me see. Now I post a link. You got you have to go through them though. It's like 200 radio shows on there. 
take back from 2015. Uh, I'll put a link up here. Somebody said they wanted my email address. I'll post my email address too. All right, now y'all just got to go through that yourself and find it. Okay. And it's called the Lust for Eye Part 1 and Part 2, the Lust for Eye. All praise to the Most High, Abigail. Hey, Captain Isaac, the most high Christ bless. You sure ain't lying. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be burned with them nukes. Some brothers with lust for power were like a crack fiend and would appoint base men over cities. Simple as hell. Who else did that? Appointed the base men. People that weren't priests, they appointed them. That was uh that was during the time of Jeroboam. That's that Jeroboam spirit. All right, y'all. Y'all don't got no questions. I hope y'all enjoyed today's class. Uh, with that, y'all, I'm gonna say Shalom, Most High Christ bless. Hey, uh, Sabbath tonight, sundown. Uh, hey, y'all, we're gonna plan another fast. Uh, Monday sundown for brothers and sisters that want to join in for whatever you battling, whatever. It's fast Monday sundown to Tuesday sundown. Uh, y'all make sure y'all prepare for the Sabbath, Sabbath accordingly. Happy prep day. Most high Christ bless. I want to give double honors to the bishop, Bishop Nathaniel. I want to give honors to our deacons, our captains, our officers, our soldiers, all you brothers and sisters that's help pushing this truth. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Stay focused, Israel. Stay focused. Shalom.